Welcome to Crafting Your CV. My name is Dr. Lisa Hanasono, and on behalf of Bowling Green State University's Center for Faculty Excellence, I want to thank you for your interest in this important topic. Imagine there are three academics. Janae is a PhD student who's currently on the academic job market. Bryant is an assistant research professor who will be submitting his dossier for promotion and tenure this year. And Kai is a full teaching professor who is applying for a distinguished teaching award from a national academic organization. While each person is at a different place in their academic career, they all have at least one thing in common. They need to tell their story, communicate their credentials, and persuade others to support their professional and academic goals. To do this, all three academics need to craft their CVs. In this short video, we'll briefly explore first, what is a CV and why should every academic have one? Second, how to craft your CV? And finally, some special considerations, tips and tricks to help take your CV to the next level. So first, what is a CV? A CV, short for Curriculum Vita, roughly translates in Latin to life story. Outside of academia, many professionals use resumes to communicate their credentials and potential to prospective employers. In academia, things are a little different. The CV fulfills many of the functions of a resume, but instead of showcasing a person's most recent or significant accomplishments in just one to two pages, in the United States, CVs traditionally are not governed by those strict page limits. Therefore, they tend to be more expansive and provide a more holistic and detailed picture of a person. While many people assume that the primary purpose of a CV is to inform audiences about their professional and academic accomplishments, it's important to note that your CV often serves one or more persuasive purposes. From impression management, such as wanting to look good and be perceived as an accomplished teacher and or scholar, to securing employment, awards, and new professional opportunities. The best and most effective CVs are tailored to the specific situation and audience. That said, maintaining 40 or more versions of one CV to really fulfill all different outlets and opportunities and audiences is quite unmanageable and somewhat inefficient. So therefore, I recommend creating and maintaining one general CV and then tweaking it and tailoring it for specific opportunities and outlets as they arise. So now that you know what a CV is, let's talk about how to craft one. Each person's CV will be unique, and that's great because each scholar has a unique life story. That said, most CVs contain some key areas of information. These areas include, but are not limited to, your education, employment, awards and recognitions, your scholarship, which might include things like your grants, publications, patents, juried exhibitions, conference presentations and proceedings and keynote presentations, as well as your teaching, um, the courses you teach at the institutions that you teach, the mode of delivery, as well as the roles you might have, curriculum development, as well as service, such as things that you do at the university, department, college, professional and community levels, things like elected leadership positions, committees, serving on editorial boards, doing reviewing, and so much more. Uh, you can also include things like advising, if you're advising graduate students and or undergraduates, honors projects, dissertations and theses. Um, it can also include administration work if you're a chair, a director, a dean, or hold some sort of um, formal leadership position. It can also include media outreach and different forms of engaging the public. And so there's a lot of different categories and information that you might present in your Vita. A lot of times the categories and information reflect some conventionality of your home discipline or disciplines, and it might also be shaped by the context in which you're using it. So for example, some awards will ask scholars to submit a, an application packet containing an abbreviated CV and maybe they'll say up to five pages in length and we are particularly interested in your most recent publications. In those situations you want to listen to the instructions and tailor your CV accordingly, right? Um, accomplishments are usually listed in chronological order within each subcategory and make sure to pay close attention to consistent formatting, author order, as well as details. Typos and errors can be very revealing. 
As a quick note, BGSU faculty are required to use Faculty 180 to create CVs for the internal purposes of promotions, merit, and tenure, um, as well as some other types of major reviews. The Faculty 180 platform allows faculty to quickly generate versions of their CVs for internal purposes affiliated with these particular promotion and review processes. That said, some faculty may also choose to create their own CVs outside of this platform for non-BGSU purposes, such as pursuing external funding, fellowship, awards, and other things like that. Now that we've talked about the basics of what a CV is and how to craft one, let's go ahead and explore some tips and tricks for taking your CV to the next level. First, it can be helpful to tailor your CV to your specific audience and occasion. For example, if you're applying for a job at a research intensive institution, it can be advantageous to list your research accomplishments before your teaching and service, as the search committee will most likely want to first examine your scholarly record. Remember, search committee members are busy people, and they typically digest documents from the first to the last page. So placing your research first at, um, at a research-oriented institution communicates that you get it. It communicates that you understand their priorities and that you're not burying some of the most important information for them, um, and it makes their job easier. Applying to a teaching institution instead? Perhaps list your teaching accomplishments before your research. And if you're an administrator or you're seeking an administrator type of position, some things that you can do include reframing some of the work um, to highlight the leadership experiences and evidence of the desirable qualities that were mentioned in the job call. So for example, you might discuss how you coordinated a large department or college of X number of faculty and you managed a big budget of X thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? So providing those metrics, providing some sort of specificity of your demonstrable leadership record, right? Um, or you might discuss how an initiative you led led to an increase of recruitment of first generation students by X percent. So what I'm trying to say is that simply stating that you were the chair of a specialized task force might not provide that level of evidence um, and that specificity that a discerning search committee or hiring firm might be seeking. So as you're going through your, your CV, as you're tailoring it to your audience, really think about what evidence you can showcase and what order might be most advantageous. Second, don't pad your CV. What this means is to make sure that you list each of your accomplishments only once in the document. And it can also be really helpful to recognize which categories and subcategories are not essential for the specific outlet, audience, and occasion, and to actually remove them from that specific draft. Um, so there may be some categories that would be helpful for one venue, but not for another. And so really trimming things down so you're creating a powerful, coherent message. Sometimes it can be helpful to ask mentors or peers for feedback, ask them to take a look at your document, give you some feedback and let you know what areas might be um, showcased and maybe what areas we may want to parse out, as well as to make sure that things aren't in there multiple times. Tip number three is to update your CV as you go. Often academics are incredibly busy and it can be really easy to put off or to forget updating our CV. Sometimes we can go months, semesters, or even a full academic year without updating our document. And then at that point, it can be really hard to remember all of the accomplishments and the specific details and dates of those particular things that we've been doing. And it can take a lot of extra time to go back and try to dig up what we've accomplished. And so instead of trying to procrastinate that instead of putting that off, what I recommend doing is to create a system to regularly document your accomplishments, whether that's setting monthly calendar reminders or baking it into your weekly planning ritual, or just having a notepad or a page in a journal where you jot down specific accomplishments so that you know uh, when it's time to update your CV that those are specific things that need to be added into your main document. The important thing is don't forget to update it as you go.
And finally, I recommend downloading and reviewing sample CVs. You know, there's no one right way to present one's life story. Uh, by looking at a variety of different CVs, you'll see how people format, um, how they articulate their accomplishments, and sometimes that structure and formatting can be really generative and inspirational in terms of what you might do to update and tailor and adapt your particular CV. In addition, if you're interested in pursuing a particular job or a particular award, sometimes it can be helpful to download the CVs of people who recently got into those types of positions at those institutions or recently won those particular types of fellowships or recognitions, as it gives you an idea of where they are in their research, what their teaching experiences are, etc. So it gives you kind of an idea of what folks are up to and, and what kind of things they're producing. So whether you're on the job market, pursuing a promotion or award, or searching for new opportunities, I hope this video was helpful in unpacking what a CV is, how to craft one, and some helpful tips for transforming your document from something that simply informs folks about your academic life story to a strategic document that can persuade people to hire you, select you for a distinguished opportunity, and more. If you've got any questions, you are welcome to contact Bowling Green State University's Center for Faculty Excellence. Their address is, uh, they're located at 103 Olsk Camp Hall, and their email address is cfe at bgsu.edu. Thanks so much.